Welcome to First Baptist Hazel. We're so glad that you guys have chosen to worship with us today. Uh, before we get into our time of worship, first, we're going to see what's going on here at First Baptist Hazel. DBS is coming up in just one week. It is going to be July 25th through the 29th, uh, starting at 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m., and we would love for you all to get involved. And there's actually two ways you can do that. One is if you plan on having your kids attend this VBS, go ahead and register them online on our website, fbcazel.org forward slash VBS, and that just lets us know that they're going to be there and make plans accordingly. And the second way that you can get involved is by volunteering. We're planning on having 150 to 200 kids here, and that takes a lot of people to put it on. And so if you're interested in getting involved, whether through teaching, registrations, uh, rec, uh, group leader, all these different things, if you're interested in getting involved in any way, head out to the VBS table in the lobby and you can sign up out there. We hope to see all of you there. 
Well, if you're new here today, we would just love to welcome you and we would also love to connect with you. So if you look in the seat in front of you, there are connect cards and they look a little something like this. So if you would take one of those, fill it out, you can include as little or as much information as you like. And then at the end of the service, drop it in one of the boxes that's there at the back of the sanctuary. We're so glad that you chose to worship with us today. Each year during the VBS, during the missions rotation, they learn about Operation Christmas Child and do packing parties to help uh, provide the gospel to kids in other countries. And this actually takes a lot of supplies to be able to pack all these boxes throughout the week. And so uh, we would love it if you would consider donating any of these supplies. There's a list right here that you can look at. Or if you want to get a more detailed list uh, to see what they need, you can go out to the kids check-in desk and there's a full list there. Uh, um, the last time that you can turn this stuff in is going to be next Sunday. And so if you're interested in turning any of the stuff in and donating it, you can just take it over the kids' uh, check-in desk next week. Uh, we hope that you all can get involved in this. All right, that's all that's going on here at First Baptist Azel. We're going to enter into a time of worship through song. So let's all stand together and worship. All right, good morning, First Baptist Azel. It's so good to see you in God's house this morning. I hope you came ready. This song with us as we celebrate God. Um, let's worship together as a church. Sing this out with everything you have. And let's give God the glory this morning. Good morning. How are you, First Baptist Hazel? Doing good. All right. Well, you can go ahead and be seated. Uh, we are so glad that you chose to worship with us today. If you today is your first day or if you've been coming for 10 years, we're just glad that you're here today in a seat. So we're happy to see you. Well, 
The students got back Friday um, from a mission trip, and we just wanted to give you um, a recap of what happened throughout the week, and we're going to have a testimony from one of the students in just a second. Uh, each summer, we get the um, privilege to go to St. Louis, Missouri, and work with a team called One Team International, and we get to go and put on a VBS at a church in Centerville, Illinois. Uh, it's Calvary Missionary Baptist Church, and we've been working alongside of them for, man, it's been years, five to seven years or something like that. It's been a long time. And so this past week, we put that on, and here's the deal. We didn't do anything as leaders. We just supervised. Uh, the students led the whole thing. They taught the Bible stories. They led rec, crafts, all of that. It was all student-led, and so it was a huge blessing to see them do that. Um, we've been calling some of them to grow up and to... to become leaders, and we saw growth this week in that with these students, so it was a huge blessing. Uh, we had about 117 registered uh, throughout the week through the camp. Um, we had 12 salvations at this week at the camp, and so, uh, and countless seeds were planted, and so it was an amazing thing. Uh, Thursday evening, we had a family night, and so we were all able to also bring the parents into up there, too, to hear a message as well, and so it was great, and as the highlight of the week for me was Thursday when we were dropping the kids off. Um, they started to say, well, we'll see you tomorrow. And we're like, well, no, we're heading back to Texas, but here you go. We can, we can give you a flyer. It's got the church information. And just because we won't be here, there'll be services Wednesdays and Sundays. Come be a part of the church up here at Calvary Missionary Baptist Church. And they were so excited to know there's a church that loves them and cares for them. And so, uh, so many seeds were planted, and it was an awesome experience. Uh, but we've got Allison O'Donnell is going to come up here right now, um, so she's going to give us a testimony. Good morning, everyone. My name is Allison. Um, a lot of y'all, my name is Boo. I had an amazing opportunity to return to St. Louis and put on a VBS for our youth mission trip. I knew a little bit of what to expect since I have been previously, but... What we as a youth group didn't expect is how much of a blessing we would receive as well. We went into this knowing that this was a chance to share the gospel and the love of Christ and love on these kids who don't get a lot of love at home and who don't know what love is. These kids were so eager and so excited to learn about the gospel and they had the kindest and nicest souls and the biggest amount of love for Jesus I think that I have ever seen. And it was so amazing and beautiful to watch. God touched them and worked in their hearts tremendously. This year I had the chance to teach third and fourth graders. Um, day two of VBS, we talked about getting saved. And I've been in church my whole life, but something was still telling me that I wouldn't be smart enough or I didn't have enough knowledge to help these kids out. But um, I'm happy to say that seven out of my 13 kids accepted Jesus that day. So, and I am in no way, shape, or form saying that it's just the youth that were able to help these kids out. I fully believe that it was God who moved through us to get to these kids. So, and seeing my little third and fourth graders accept Christ was probably one of the most beautiful things I think that I have ever experienced. Um, but God not only blessed the people we ministered to, he also blessed our youth group as well. We, as a group, we laughed, we cried, we had fun, and we bonded in only ways that can happen while serving others. Seeing God move the way he did this week is something I hope everyone gets to experience one day um, and please keep those kids in your thoughts and prayers because even though we planted seeds, we may never get to see the full outcome and um, just pray that the kids that we ministered to will grow in Christ. So thank you. All right, I don't know how you can't worship after hearing that. So we're gonna continue worship. I'm gonna pray first and then we'll continue. Uh, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the way that you just continually bless us even though we don't deserve it, Lord. And we, we know that you're moving. We know that you're moving here. You're moving all over the place, Lord. You're moving in St. Louis. And Lord, I just pray that this morning as we continue to sing, that we just sing with our whole hearts and we're not just reading off a screen, but that we're singing of the truths that you've done in our lives, Lord. And that we sing with just everything. <laughs> 
Lord, we love you. We thank you and shall we pray. Amen.
here. I'm sorry about our technical problems. Our computer crashed. Did you notice that? So that was, by the way, officially, uh, that's, we have an Apple computer and we got that computer because I was told by a staff member and I quote, Apple computers never crash. So there you go. All right. Uh, we'll be back on Windows next Sunday. So <laughs> by the way, Allison, thank you for that testimony, wherever you are. I love that. Allison is wearing bell bottoms, and for those of you who are not up on fashion, uh, bell bottoms was made famous by Elvis Presley, and uh, the the bottom of your uh, down at your feet, uh, your pants, they flare out like a the bell of a trumpet. I assume that's why they're called bell bottoms. In uh, about 1974 or five, my mother came home with a brand new pair of pants for me, a pair of jeans. And I was horrified when I uh, uh, tried them on because they were straight leg jeans. 
and I was not going to go out in public looking like that. I threw such a fit, she went back to Gibson's because we bought all of our fashion at Gibson's and she bought me a pair of a proper bell-bottom jeans. And so, uh, but, uh, so I had flashbacks, I love those pants. Anyway, all of that's completely irrelevant. I'm glad you're here. Friday night, Cherry and I went to a banquet over at the Gaylord uh, Hotel there in Grapevine. Normally, we're not permitted in there, but uh, what a beautiful place. My goodness, and just a wonderful meal. It was a, 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 the International Gideons Convention, and they have a pastor's appreciation banquet uh, each year. And this was the first time Cherry and I had gone to that. Just had a great time, wonderful food, and over eight, of course, and just tremendous worship. We got to hear testimonies from Gideons uh, from throughout the world and see how God has uh, uh, blessed the world through the Gideon ministry. If you're not familiar with Gideons, in fact, you're going to hear a little bit about that in a minute. I Googled it, and uh, as you and I know, Google is never wrong. And uh, according to Google, they've handed out since their formation over two billion Bibles. Uh, that, is, that is a staggering number. Oh. Wow. So uh, they contacted me uh, several months ago and said, hey, we would like to, while we have our international convention, we have people from all over the world here, we would like to share with you um, a, a Gideon uh, who could come in and will be here for the convention and one of our leaders. And I said, sure. And so he's, um, uh, I will say he's from an obscure corner of the world. Uh, is it Tennessee? So um, anyway, uh, from... <laughs> From, from the forest reaches, um, uh, although it's got to be cooler in Tennessee than it is here, because it's got to be cooler everywhere than it is here uh, right now. And I told the earlier service, lest I complain, and I know I need to sit down, but lest I complain about the temperature, and I do, because I enjoy doing that, it is hot, but we, we live in the first time, you know, the, the last 50 or 100 years, or 50 or 75 years, we, we we wake up in an air-conditioned house and we go to our air-conditioned job or air-conditioned school in our air-conditioned car. And then we come to church and we worship in an air-conditioned sanctuary and then we complain about how hot it is. So um, my first church I pastored had no air conditioning. We had giant windows on the left and right and we opened them up and it flowed through. That's how old I am. Anyway, uh, be that as it may, uh, the Gideon said, hey, we'd like to send, spend, send a speaker and." And I said, absolutely, and, and his name is Dr. Dan Scott. Now, he doesn't go by doctor. He is an attorney, and yes, he is a Christian and an attorney. <clears throat> there is such a thing. So I have all kinds of wonderful attorney jokes I'm not going to tell right now, but <clears throat> so I call him Dr. Dan. I like that, Dr. Dan. He is from Knoxville, Tennessee. He's been at Gideon since 1989. He is the former president of the Tennessee Association of the Gideons. He's traveled to over 24 countries representing the, the Gideons. So he's been all over the world. He, he has also been a, a Sunday school teacher and has taught young marriage for 17 years at Seven Heights Baptist Church. And he ser currently serves as the international trustee for the United States. Uh, uh, he's in what they call zone eight for the Gideons. He represents Tennessee, Kentucky, and Missouri, Mississippi. Is that right? And so uh, we are excited to have him here. Would you make him feel wel welcome this morning? I have to get my timer out here because um, I know we got to go to lunch. I need that Bible to save my soul. I need that Bible to save my soul. That's what the young man said as he came down the steps. You see, we were at, on the sidewalk in New York City. We were doing school distribution and the, the leaders in New York City had an idea that we can keep all the riffraff out if we will make uh, the, the sidewalks around the school in that entire block part of the school property. And that way we can outlaw anybody from coming on the school property other than the students and the teachers. And so that way we get the riffraff out. So what we did, we looked for another place that we could do distribution. And we noticed that just on the, on the other side of this block where the school was, there was a subway where the steps came down. You know, most of us think of a subway 
as a subway, right? Underneath, well, not in New York City. And just like everything's bigger in Texas, well, everything's different in New York City. Because this one was above ground and the students came down those steps. So we set up at the bottom of the steps so that we might be able to share with them a copy of the Word of God. And we started that work and everything was going good. And, and then this young fellow comes up, he sees the older guys down there and he decided he's going to taunt them a little bit and he throws his hand up in the air. He says, I need that Bible to save my soul. I need that Bible to save my soul. You know, and as we were coming down the steps, George Robinson said to him, son, you sure do. Let me give you one. And he reached his hand out and gave him a copy of the New Testament. The one book that he could have gotten that day that will tell him how he can know in an intimate way the very creator of the universe. You know, amazingly enough, the guy that was taunting us reached his hand out and actually took that book. Well, all of his buddies did as well. And so they went back behind us where there was a little market and they could get them something to eat, you know, a cup of coffee, a Coca-Cola or whatever. But this time when they came out, he had him a prop, you see. Now he had him a little book. And so now he slings his arm up in the air and he holds that book and he says, I need that Bible to save my soul. I need that Bible to save my soul. And George Robinson said, son, let me show you something in that book. So he reached his hand out. The guy gives it to him. So now it was him and George, the Word of God, and the Holy Spirit of God. George opened up the Word, and in the back of these little testaments, we've got the plan of salvation, how you can come to know Jesus as your personal Savior. And he began to share with this young man how God loved him so much, he would allow his son Jesus to come walk this planet and die for him so that he could have a personal relationship with the very creator of the universe. You know, he explained to the young man that, that he likes to do things his own way. And, you know, he said to him, he said, do you like to do things your own way? And he said, well, yeah, of course I do. And George said, well, you know, I do too. And that's what the Bible says is sin. Instead of following God's ways, we follow our own ways. And the Bible says that the wages of sin are death. And he turned it right there and he showed it right there. Uh, For all have sinned and fallen short of the God. As it is written, none is righteous, no, not one. That's what the Bible says. And then he shared with him this really important thing. Even though the wages of sin is death, you don't have to pay that price. Jesus Christ already paid that price for you when he hung on a cross in Calvary. And then he read this verse to him. He said, here, God says this, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him. And he asked that young man, he said, you know, what that means is that if you'll open your heart to Jesus, he will come in to your heart and live inside your heart. Is that something you'd like to do today? This young man who was taunting us 10 minutes earlier opened his heart to Jesus right there on that sidewalk. Now, folks, I want to tell you what happens in heavens when something like that happens. The Bible says that when one of the sheep is lost and he is found and he comes to Christ, that the angels shout for glory. Amen? That's what the Bible says. That's not what I say. And so what happens is the angels are shouting for glory. Of course, we're pretty excited because... We exist for one purpose and one purpose only, and that is to win men, women, boys, and girls to Jesus Christ. Can I tell you that we're most known for placement of the Word of God in the traffic lanes of life, but really that's not what our objective is. Our objective, the only reason we exist is to win men, women, boys, and girls to Jesus Christ. Isaiah 55 verse 11 says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall accomplish that which I please, and it will prosper according to the thing that I send it. Why did God send his word? Really, he sent it for two reasons. He said two reasons. One, I want you to have a book that will show you how you can come to relationship with my son Jesus. And so the first thing is, if God's going to prosper his word, he's got to use it to bring people to him, right? 
And the second thing is that we would have a manual for living. But, but you understand, if, if all we become, if all the Guineas and International becomes is the greatest Bible distribution network in the world, we have lost our way. Because you see, we place the word of God because God promised his word will not return void. Have you ever seen God work in mysterious ways? Have you? Man, I have. My life, if I had time today, I'd share with you how God worked in my life. Imagine, it's 1898. Any of y'all remember that? 1898, you know, 1898, you're in Wisconsin, and you know, the, uh, the streets are dirt back then, right? And, and the traveling salesmen, they would travel to sell their wares, and they always had to have a place to sleep. So Joe Nicholson checks into the hotel that night, or John Nicholson checks in the hotel that night, and um, he gets his room, but you know, the light's not very good in the hotel room, so he's sitting down in the lobby. And then another salesman checks in. Well, it turns out there's no rooms. There's no rooms available for him. 1898, and there's no rooms available. You see, they didn't have Expedia back then, right? No rooms available. But the guy at the front desk says, that fellow over there that's doing the paperwork, he's got two beds in this room. Maybe he'll let you stay in his room. And so he goes over and he starts up a conversation with him. He tells him, so look, I need a place to sleep. They tell me you've got two beds in your room. Can I share that room with you? And you know what the guy said? Yeah. And so later that night, they went up to the room. Uh, they went up to the room, and, and uh, as, uh, um, as they were getting ready for bed, um, Joe Nicholson said to him, said, look, uh, I promised my mother I would read the Word of God every single night. You don't mind if I leave the lamp on? A lamp, you know, you know lamp. I don't mind if I leave the lamp on so that I can read the Word of God. Well, they began to talk about spiritual things. They began to talk about spiritual things. And over a few days, God moved on them to start an organization whose purpose was to assist the spiritual life of traveling salesmen and to bring men and women to Jesus. So for 10 years, from 1898 to 1908, the Gideons International never placed a single copy of God's Word, you see. So we started as an organization designed for bringing people to Jesus. And that's what we still do. Well, 1908, what happens? 1908, we're able to, to speak at a um, um, organization, what you would, we would think about here today, we would call it the association. We were able to speak at the association and, and um, a Presbyterian minister stands up after the presentation. He says, look, I think, I think that we ought to support the Gideons International and get them, help them get Bibles in hotels and they bought the first 25 Bibles there in that association meeting to put into a hotel room. And that's how we started. Now, that's a pretty humble beginning, right? So what happens? What happens? God continues to bless the ministry. Do you know why? Because we're true to our, our objective of winning the loss to Jesus. We began here in the United States. Of course, back then, you know, the United States was really, really big. You know, the interstate system made the United States really little, right, in the, the uh, plane system, but it was really big. And so we began working in the United States. I apologize to you. Um, I've got sinus, sinus infection, so I'll bring it back from Tennessee. The, um, um, we began working in the United States, and over time, we said, Lord, would you have us take your word into other countries. And slowly, God began to bless that. You know why? Because we are taking hope to a world that desperately needs hope. And so today, we are working in 200 countries, territories, and possessions. And what we do is we go into hotels and motels and schools and jails, doctor's offices, lawyers' offices, and we know they need it, right? Somebody came up to me after the first service and they said, Brother Scott, I've got some really good lawyer jokes. You want to hear them? I said, no, not really, because there are not any new ones for me. 
because we're true to the mission that God has given us, he's continued to bless us. And what happens is we extend your reach, your church beyond where you could possibly go. I've had the great opportunity to travel around the world, 24 countries, doing the work of the ministry, training Gideons and auxiliary, our wives and widows, uh, training them how to do better in doing the work of the ministry. Um, but very few Gideons ever do that. Most Gideons work in their own Jerusalem, their own hometown. But we have people, business and professional men, in these 200 countries, territories, and, territories and possessions doing the work of the ministry. Have you ever heard of a country called Syria? You know, we don't hear much about Syria anymore, right? It seems like when we start a new war, there's a new country that we hear about. But, you know, for a long time, we used to hear about Syria uh, on the news. And a big conflict there, primarily a Muslim nation. In Syria, we've got two camps. That's the organization that, for the local uh, ministry. Two camps with 22 business and professional men who say, I'll take the gospel to the country of Syria. You say, well, Brother Dan, how can you take the gospel into a country where they're primarily Muslims because the Holy Spirit of God draws people to the gospel. I had the great honor to uh, serve as an extended arm of your church and churches like yours in the United Arab, Arab Emirates. Uh, over in the Middle East, they are so rich, they don't work. You know what I'm saying? They do not work. So they import all of their laborers. And there in, in the UAE, there's about 4 million, they call them expatriates, people coming in out front, outside the land uh, to do the work because the, the, um, they don't have to do work themselves. And so we were there because there's a huge desire for the gospel for those that come into the country. Now, amazingly enough, when they asked me would I go, I said, well, yeah, but what are we going to do? How are you going to share the gospel there? Well, there are churches sowing seed in that country, and it's taking root like crazy. It, they're a little scared. You know, sometimes we share the gospel and we're a little fearful. Am I speaking the truth or is it just me? We share the gospel. We're a little fearful. We wonder if, well, will they, will they, you know, make fun of me? Will they, you know, will they think bad about me? You know, will they think less of me? Well, nobody's ever thought that here in this room but me, right? Well, here's the deal. There, this is what some of the locals told me. Not, not the, not the uh, physical people local. I mean, people that were local that were there and the immigrants or expatriates. They said, be careful about what you say. Because if you speak the name of Jesus, they'll put you on a plane and take you out of here if you're, if you're lucky. In fact, it was, they were so fearful during the training. We had a training session before we started the work. Um, they said, be careful about what you say when you go out into the community. So be careful about this. And then they write the name Jesus on the board. Said, be careful. And then they erased it really quickly. But you know what? Even in that circumstance, the Holy Spirit of God is drawing people to him. The Holy Spirit of God is drawing people to him. Why? Because there's going to come a day, there's going to come a day that Jesus is coming back. Absolutely, 100% for sure, he's coming back. And these people need to hear the, about the gospel. And your church and churches like yours all over the world are taking the gospel there. We have... We, because we have so many um, uh, people out in the communities, we're able to go where even, even where missionaries can't go. You know, an example, Ukraine. You know, we hear about Ukraine now on the news all the time. In Ukraine, in Ukraine, the, um, of course, the bombing started, and they started sending the women and kids out of Ukraine. They wouldn't let anybody leave Ukraine if you were of, of uh, fighting age. You know, none of the men could leave if you're fighting age, you got to stay and fight. But everybody else left. Well, so what's happened? What's happened is they're going to these other countries, uh, Romania, Germany, um, uh, all of the ones right around there. Well, guess what? Do you know what they have when they go? 
pretty much what they can carry in a bag. I mean, they leave everything they've got to try to get to safety. Well, the Gideons International, because we have Gideons in Romania, uh, in, in um, uh, Germany, in those surrounding countries, and Ukraine as well. We sent over a million New Testaments in the Russian and Ukrainian language. Why? Those people need hope, and we need to give it to them. And it's the local church that God commanded to do that. See, in Matthew 28, he told us to go into all the world, all the world, and take the gospel to the world. That's what he told me and you to do, right? Beginning right in Jerusalem, right? Beginning here right at home. So, okay, well, so what about at home, Brother Dan? What about at home? Well, think about this just a minute. You know, we just had a big event down in Uvalde, right? These, in these events like this, the family comes in because they're so desperate, so desperate to support their loved ones. But you know, there's a lot of sorrow there. Because they're looking for some bright light, some, something that would give them hope. And you know what happens? The Gideons International are there. Plenty of other relief agencies taking food and that sort of stuff. But we as an extended arm of the church are taking the gospel and placing it into their hands. And I want to tell you this, when, when you give the gospel to them, they want to know more about it. You know, in the United States, a lot of times when we hand them a scripture, uh, they'll take it, but they really won't ask you a whole lot about it. But in most of the foreign countries uh, and in these emergency situations, they want to know about it. They want to talk to you about what's inside. I remember being in Lima, Peru, we were at a university and we do a lot of university distributions at in Knoxville, Tennessee, we have a little university. Y'all probably heard of it, University of Tennessee, right? So um, I will tell you this, um, uh, my brother was, was telling you, and I'm a lawyer, I really am. When I was early in my career, I went to some training, trial training at SMU. I was young, man, I, I uh, led, led a pretty sheltered life, right? And so I'm at SMU and they're all talking about UT, UT, UT. And I called my wife that night and I said, man, this is crazy. They're all Tennessee fans down here. <laughs> anyway, University of Tennessee on the first Tuesday of October will be there on the sidewalk placing about 10,000 New Testaments into the hands of the future leaders of the free world. I was in Lima. The kids were coming, coming along. Um, and honestly, sometimes in those distributions, it goes so fast, you don't really have much time to, to talk with them. And you know, we're passing testaments, passing testaments, they're coming along, coming along. And here in my side vision, I saw somebody standing there, you know? And I turned and looked, and it was a um, college student, had the most beautiful black hair, brown eyes. If God had given us girls, that's what my children would look like. She had her testament and she had it open like this. And she said, can you tell me about the Jesus of this book? You see, she had got her testament when she went through earlier and she'd gone in and sat down on the uh, fountain, at the fountain, you know, where the edge of the fountain is and began to read the scripture. And she kept hearing about Jesus and she wanted to know more. I called for a guy that was down the way. I said, hey man, come here and take my post right here. And I went inside with her and opened the gospel, shared with her the truth about who Jesus was, and she gave her life to Christ. You see, when I say that, when I say that placing that word of God into people draws them to Jesus, it's because that's what happens over and over. You know, we have a lot of uh, hotels in, um, uh, I'm, I'm from just uh, out of Knoxville, but we have a lot of hotels in Pigeon Forge. Have y'all ever heard of a girl down that way by the name of Dolly? You know Dolly Parton? Well, that's where she's from, Sevier County. Uh, we have about 30,000 hotel rooms and log cabins that people come and sleep there. We'd love to have you come and spend your money there. Um, we were at the, at the Schuler Inn. Uh, we check those hotel rooms the first Tuesday of February every single year. And we go in and we pull the Bible out and we check it and be sure that none of the Bible is defaced because this is a witness for our Jesus, right? 
And so many times they are defaced or they may have been used as a coaster or something. It just doesn't look good for, for Christ. So we pull it out. When we pull the Bibles out, what we do is we then uh, put another cover on them. It's got to be soft. You can't send these into the prisons because the prisoners, they don't have anything but time. They're very creative. Uh, so we put what's called a soft cover on them and we put them into the prisons. So we finished that distribution. We were about done and Brother Tim Agee says to me, to, to me said, and the other guys on the team said, look, would you all go down and uh, pray while I share Christ with Barbara? You see, Barbara was the, the girl um, that would open the doors. You know, she had a master key. She would open the doors. We would go inside. She would open the doors. We would That's how you get to do uh, those hotel rooms uh, every year. And he, uh, Tim Agee, talked with her about who Jesus was. He shared with her the love of Christ. He shared with her her sin problem. And he shared with her the remedy that God provided for sin. And then he asked her this most important question. Is there any reason why you wouldn't give your life to Jesus today? And you know, Barbara, right there on the sidewalk in the Shuler Inn, gave her life to Jesus. Now, folks, I want to tell you this is a very simple thing. God told us to go into all the world with the gospel. And so that's what we're doing. And we go on your behalf to take the gospel to the world. Would you join us? Would you participate with us? Here's how a couple of ways you can help us. First, pray for the ministry. You know, I don't think there's many of us that are a real physical risk sharing the gospel. I mean, we might get made fun of, you know, or we might say, That's a that guy's a kook, that old brother Dan, he's a kook. I might get that. But we're not at physical risk. But you know, in many of the countries we're in, in many of the countries we're in, you're risking your life if you share the gospel. But did you know you've got business and professional men and their wives that are still doing it? I remember back, uh, I hadn't been a Gideon very long, so it's been somewhere in the 89, 90 range. We got a call out to pray, you know, and, and the call out was, look, pray ferociously, pray ferociously. We've got um, Gideons that are driving around in their car praying because they cannot meet. They wouldn't, the Guineas International wouldn't tell us the country. It was so secret. And you know, in about five years, we opened the ministry in Liberia. Now imagine that. One, at one date, you can't even pray. You can't even get together and pray. And then five years later, God opens the ministry in Liberia. So, so pray for us. Pray that we'd be faithful to our calling. Next thing I'd like you to do is I'd like you to support us financially. You know, um, we don't go out and get corporate sponsors to buy these Bibles. Um, we just passed a, a scripture distribution goal this, uh, actually at yesterday's business session, um, of 67 million scriptures around the world. We have actually placed 2.4 billion with a B, with a B, 2.4 billion since we started uh, distribution in 1908. Pretty significant. So help us buy scriptures, if you will. There's a couple of ways you can do that. The first is through the, the Gideon Bible card program. You've got a display uh, out there. It's a pretty simple program, really. Um, so often we have family, that, uh, family or friends that die. This gives you the ability to just take this card, uh, make a note, uh, write down how many Bibles you want to purchase, and send it to them. You put the card in this envelope and just mail it to them. This other envelope here is designed to allow you to make your contribution to the Gideons International. It's already gonna be addressed. You put a stamp on it, send your check payable to the Gideons International, and that'll go for the purchase and placement of scripture. And you know, also, in addition to people passing, and I use it a lot because I travel a lot, um, we've got another card called uh, Thinking of You, and it's, it's designed for when we want to honor somebody. You know, uh, my kids were soccer players, and so they had soccer coaches, and I really appreciated the way that they poured their life into my kids. And so always at the end of the year, I would buy them the word of God saying, look, I care enough about you. I appreciate enough about you to give the very best. And you can do that. Um, uh, you can also go to Gideons.org uh, if you'd like to give. Uh, I want you to know that, that God uh, is in control of our ministry. Uh, I'm on what's called the International Cabinet. And I can tell you we do nothing on that cabinet without significant prayer uh, because God continues to wrap our ministry 
in safety. And so we'd love for you to give. You know, we don't know the impact of a scripture. This scripture here is cost a dollar and fifty six cents purchase and place in the hands of someone. The hotel Bible is five dollars. So we don't know <coughs> we don't know what the impact of one Bible can be, right? Well, let me share with you Buck Bucklew's story about how one Bible impacted his life. You see, Buck Bucklew was a truck driver. And he had a route where he would go out on, on Monday morning and he'd be gone four, day, four nights. And he said that each night, you know, he would check into a hotel and um, he said, look, I just used to get me a six pack of beer and go in the hotel and I'd drink that beer and drink all of them pretty much. And he helped me sleep better, he said. And so that was his practice. So he checks into this hotel and he said, I, took, I opened up my bag, took my shaving kit. Some of you guys may remember those shaving kits. We don't carry as much in them as we used to, but he goes back in the bathroom and he puts his shaving kit out there and he zips his shaving kit open. And there on the top of his shaving kit is a little book like this one. And that's odd, you see, because he didn't pack that in his bag. And he reaches up and picks it up and he opens it. And there on the front, it says, Dear Daddy, nobody loves you like Jesus does. Turn to the back page. You see, in the back page, we have the Bible verses for the plan of salvation to take a person all the way from John 3, 16, all the way down to I stand at the door and knock. And as he read those verses, these are his words, not mine. As he read those verses, he said, when it said, when it said, I stand at the door and knock, if anyone opens the door, I will come into him. He said, I wanted, I wanted God to come into me. I wanted God to come into me. You know, right there, right there that night, he gave his life to Jesus. You know, we don't know what the impact of one scripture is, but what we do know is that Jesus is in the saving business every single day. We are your emissary in the world to take the gospel on your behalf. Let me turn it over to the pastor. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Dan. All right. He nearly lost his voice in the first service because that first service is pretty rough bunch, you know. <laughs> But thank you so much for that. You know, it just it just so encourages me as a pastor to see ministries like Operation Christmas Show, for example, that we do that's unique in the world. And for the Gideons, again, two billion Bibles. What would this world be like if there was no Gideon Bible in any hotel room anywhere in the world? And uh, the Bible, the Word of God is powerful, but it has to be, it has to be, somehow reached the hand of those who need to hear it. And I believe that God uses that and has used that for the last century uh, to win no telling. How, only God knows how many people have really come to faith in Christ. Even the Gideons can't keep tabs on every one of those Bibles. Only God knows. And you're going to find out when you get to heaven. God's going to let you know, hey, would you like to know how many people in how many languages? How many languages uh, are, do, do, the, do the Gideons provide Bible for? 194 languages. Just getting the Bible into the hands of 140, 194 language groups is incomprehensible to me. But would you do me a favor right now? Would you go ahead and bow your heads? Let's pray for just a minute. Father God, we thank you for the Gideons and what difference they have made and are making and will continue to make in this world. What a unique ministry that you have found this brilliant way through your servants in the Gideons to place Bibles in the hands of people and nations who otherwise would never hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not only in distributing the Bibles, but in sharing their faith in nation after nation after nation for over a century. 
Thank you. I pray your blessings on them. Right now, there are Gideons and nations in this world who are struggling. Even now, they, they have boxes of Bibles they're trying to distribute, but Satan is there trying to attack them and stop them. And we ask and pray in the powerful name of Jesus that that not happen, that they would be able to distribute those Bibles, that people would see the Word of God, read the Word of God, and respond to your Word, and that you would transfer, uh, transform individuals, families, and nations for your glory. Father, thank you for allowing us to be a part of that. Help us to do that very thing even now. I want to challenge you as you continue to pray. If you think about what uh, Brother Dan said in the way of an opportunity for you as to how you can help, some of you can give. We don't take an offering here uh, during the service, but on your way out, there are boxes, and you can designate an offering to the Gideons to buy Bibles and distribute throughout the world. Simple way to do that. And maybe you can only give enough for a single Bible. Well, that's one Bible. That's one Bible. That otherwise, would not be given. Maybe you can give 10 or 100 or whatever, 1,000. However, however many you feel that you would like to participate in, that's between you and God. It may be you want to participate by praying. And I want to challenge you right now as you're praying right now. All heads are bowed. All eyes are closed. Would you be willing to consider a challenge that you would be willing to pray for the Gideon ministry all over the world on a regular basis for the next year? You would make a commitment today that, that you're going to make that a part of your prayer life. I'm going to think about and pray about and encourage the, the, the Gideon ministry in this world. They need your prayers, and prayer is powerful. It may be God is calling you to do more than give or to pray. He may be calling you to serve. Gideons have to come from somewhere. They're real people. And we need Gideons in our church representing. Um, and I encourage you to consider becoming a Gideon. If you would be willing to do that, go talk to Brother Dan after the service. He'll share with you how you can participate in that. It may be God is calling you uh, to make a public decision today. Uh, to receive Christ and surrender to him. Maybe you heard the gospel as Brother Dan shared it, and you know you need to give your life to Jesus Christ. There's no reason to wait. Don't wait till next week or next month. Today is the day to start your new life. You want to come down and say, Pastor, I'd like to give my life to Christ. Or maybe God is calling you or your family to join with the church. Or maybe you just want to come in, kneel and pray for the Gideons. If God is leading right now, this, this opportunity is for you. Everyone, would you stand as you continue to pray? All heads are bowed. And as you continue to pray right now, if God is leading, you come. Well, thanks for joining us today online for our worship service. We hope that you are ministered and encouraged to while you're with us. And we just want to remind you that you can connect with us online by going to fbcazel.org forward slash connect. We hope to see you again next week.